Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. I'll link below to a piece I wrote before the Dobbs decision uh, called The Vultures Are Circling, where I talked about the fact that the abortion lobby is going to bend over backwards to get some woman killed that they can say, well, she had to have this dangerous abortion because she couldn't get a safe legal one, just like they did with Rosie Jimenez. However, a commenter named Navi said, the pro-life movement has grossly underestimated the utter depravity of its opposition. I think that's a big part of why they lost so badly in Kansas. But I disagree about the mechanism. Rather than an illegal abortion, I think pro-abortion doctors are going to deliberately let a woman die of pregnancy complica complications and cry to the media that their hands were tied by the law or that it is, was too vague, despite life exceptions in every state and ectopic pregnancies being included from the legal definition of abortion in many states. Already we have doctors and hospitals admitting to malpractice in states like Texas. The pro-life movement must call them out, help patients file lawsuits against those responsible, and get their licenses shredded. These are not good faith critics, they are bad people that have graduated from killing babies to killing women. Muggsy stick a sock in it, sorry. Okay, so I think Navi hit something on the head. An entirely new way of getting a corpse. Or really not so new. Sorry, I gotta shut my dog up. They did this in Ireland with a young woman named Savita. She was 17 weeks pregnant. She began having a miscarriage and she wanted the doctor to get the pregnancy over with. She was in a lot of pain. Her husband then claimed that the doctor refused to do an abortion because um, refused to do an abortion because the baby's heart was still beating and Ireland is a Catholic country and therefore the law prevents him from doing anything to save her life until after the baby's heart stops. And I'm providing a link to this story below, okay? Now, this is asinine, okay? Before they legalized abortion, Ireland had the lowest maternal death rate in the Western world because doctors knew how to treat pregnant women who had pregnancy com complications rather than just knee jerk, oh, let's get the fetus out and call it a day, okay? Now, the problem Savita was having was an infection, okay? Now, it's very interesting that the doctor not only did not get the fetus out, he didn't put her on antibiotics. This woman comes into your hospital, she's pregnant, she has a severe infection, and you don't put her on antibiotics? There's no way that this clown could claim that the law forbade him to give antibiotics to a pregnant woman until the fetal heart stopped. Okay? Now, if she's got an infection, and, and Rick Santorum's wife, Rick Santorum, vehemently pro-life, his wife also developed a serious infection prior to viability and they had to induce labor and the baby was born alive and was cuddled and loved. That's very different from an abortion, which at 17 weeks you reach in with forceps and you grab the limbs off that live baby and you just twist them off with forceps. The baby dies of dismemberment and doing that can cause tears in the woman's uterus. It can even poke a hole straight through her uterus and what's going to happen? It's going to take that infection straight into her bloodstream straight into her bloodstream. And that's not even counting the risks of amniotic fluid embolism, clotting disorders, just all the things that can go wrong. In fact, uterine infection is a counter indicator for abortion. You would not perform an abortion on a woman with a uterine infection because it's too risky, okay? So this doctor committed gross malpractice and let this woman die and the more I think about it, the more I think it was a political move. This doctor wanted to generate a corpse so that they could get abortion legalized in Ireland. And we are starting to see doctors <coughs> deliberately making women suffer in the United States so that they can try to blame it on abortion laws. There's an article in Jezebel. Oh, that bastion of neutrality. Non-pregnant women and girls are being denied life-saving medications due to fear of abortion laws. 
Now, that's just this terrifying headline, and none of the cases that they put in the article have anything to do with life-saving medications. Are they crucial medications? Yes. Are they medications that were making a huge difference in making these women's lives better? Yes. Should the doctors have taken those medications away? No, but they weren't life-saving medications. Be honest, Jezebel. So here's the two examples that they give. A local news outlet in Arizona reported this weekend that a 14-year-old girl in Tucson was being denied a refill on her prescription for methotrexate, a drug she'd been taking for arthritis and osteoporosis because a judge recently allowed a Civil War era abortion ban in the state to take effect and the drug in question is also used to induce abortion in cases of ectopic pregnancies. The only reason to deny this girl her methotrexate would be because you want to claim that Oh, I might get in trouble for an abortion, okay? An abortion is, you know there's a baby there, you deliberately kill it, okay? IUDs aren't technically abortions, even though their entire purpose is that if a little tiny human being comes into existence, they're going to make sure that there's no hospitable place for it and it gets washed out of the uterus and dies, okay? This is ball. And then the other one. Jezebel just reported last week, oh, there's a definitely neutral source, that a woman in New York who said her cluster headaches were so debilitating that she had contemplated suicide was denied medication by her doctor because she is of childbearing age and the medication she needs poses risk to a hypothetical fetus. She recorded her conversation with the doctor because she didn't think people would believe her. I think she and the doctor staged that whole conversation so that she could go to Jezebel and go, oh, and I think he gave her the medication for her headaches, okay? Doctors have been prescribing medications that could potentially damage the fetus. They st they've been prescribing them before abortion was banned. I mean, before abortion was legalized with Roe, they've continued to prescribe them. There's little things going, don't give these to pregnant women, but it doesn't say don't give them to women. So we need to call them out on this. These doctors are doing this because they are trying to maximize women's suffering in order to score political points. They're going to get somebody killed just like that Irish doctor got Savita killed. This is playing politics with women's lives and it's being done by the people who are supposedly motivated by their desire to protect women. These people are deplorable.